Keyhole cutters are super useful for hanging artwork or making T-slots. So how do you do it in Fusion 360? It's easy, I'll show you. Hey, it's Justin from Portland CNC. You can make keyholes with a router table for making T-slots or to make hanging something easy. If you're like me though, you've got a precise hole making machine and would rather use it than a router table. So let's use Fusion 360 to set up the CAD and CAM to cut some simple keyholes for the back of a sign we designed for one of our clients. Do me a favor and subscribe real quick. Hit the bell if you don't want to miss any of our upcoming videos. Thanks. We got the chance to design and make this wavy 3D sign for our clients. It's something I love to do, and I often get questions about projects like these, so I'm making an online course to show how to design forms like this. The first session is upcoming, but it's called Organic 3D Modeling. I'll put a card here and link that below. To hang it on the wall, we added keyholes on the backside, which you've seen on products before. Basically, a keyhole cutter has a wide lower diameter cutter and a skinny upper section, so it can cut two sections in one pass. You guide the tool in vertically, then make a short pass back and forth horizontally. After, you exit vertically through the same hole you started in. There is no way to describe this without making an innuendo. I tried. So this is a really simple tool path, but you need to effectively hack your way into it with a tool path in Fusion 360. It's not hard, but you just have to know which boxes to check. Sort of like a metaphor for life, huh? So let's go back to design and I can show you how I went about making this. We're using this Bosch 85078, which I think I got on Amazon. It's a 3 8 inch large diameter and 3 16 inch small diameter keyhole cutter. Check the description, I'll put a link to it below. Also, if you wanna get this model with the keyhole boolean and our tool setups, there'll be information on how to get that on the blog post link below. And as always, Patreon members at $5 or more will get this model and all of our CAD models used in our videos. Basically, the best way I know how to make this is to create some type of boolean shape, which is combined in Fusion 360. That shape looks like this. I have it as a separate model here. And it basically I've drawn the larger diameter, the smaller diameter, and then moved those apart based on a plane. Extruded that on the bottom, so I get the bottom height of the larger section and kind of the top section here. So this is where we'd enter, go straight down, slide across and back. And what's important here is the sketch at the bottom. So that's like a center line to center line movement. It could be as long as you want. That's how long I made it. It's essentially a tangent of the two circles. So I've saved this and inserted it into my sign model. So here's my sign model. On the back then I drew a sketch. I scroll back here in the timeline, there. And I wanted to give my clients a few options to mount the sign up themselves. So 32 inches is a few options of 16 inch studs, which is common in the United States. So every two is 16. So you could pick any of these five spots every eight inches to be able to hang on your studs. So all I've done is just drawn a sketch with points, then every eight inches is a mounting location. So to get this keyhole boolean in here, we go into the data panel. So there's our keyhole boolean. We'd right click, insert in design, which is what happened here. So now I've got that model inserted right here. And I think I broke the link so that it was just in the model. Uh, that's my sketch for the keyholes. And then to get that in the right spot, what you do is it's floating out over here is take a joint. Haha. <laughs> so this is what the top view of the negative space of the keyhole looks like. I want to select my snap point of the joint. So it's going to be on this point, which is the center of where effectively I'm going to hang from. That's what I was designing for on the back of this sign. I'm going to click the point on the left here and select there for the joint mate. We've moved our joint to the right spot. It's actually upside down. So I'll click flip. And that's exactly where I want it. So I'll push OK. You can see it's mated exactly where I want it there. I've already done this in my model. So that's exactly where I want it. And then all I did here was Boolean that or combine, which is modify 
combine. And the target body is this. The tool body is the Boolean object. I'm going to keep the tool and I'm going to cut. So effectively, I just made my hole there. Hide that body. You can see now exactly what, let's turn on wireframe, what that looks like. If you imagine wherever that dot is, that's going to be the center of the screw that you're putting into the wall. And the head's going to go on the inside. So it'll fit through the large hole, slide up, and then hang centered on that dot flush with the wall. So you can do a few things here. I followed it up by patterning the feature, which is a common thing we do, where the feature is actually the Boolean space. If I hide my keyhole, what I selected was the Boolean. So you can pattern the feature, which is like what we've done previously in the timeline. Select that. The spacing is every eight inches, five quantity. So then it's going to optimize that across. So you can see there's five different holes. This is totally just for looks at this point. So I have a good idea because I can pattern this in CAM as well. So I don't need to do that. But basically what we're looking for in the end here is this sketch line. This is the important part of what we're going to do with the cam. So if we jump over into the manufacturer environment, I'll show you how we set up the cam. All right, so we're in the manufacturing space of the model we we're working on. I'm going to run through what we actually did on this project. We'll go through those operations. You don't actually need to do this, but I think it's smart and had a recommendation from a friend too that also does the same. So we use a two flute quarter inch down cutter, which is a Vortex 1330, to do a bore operation to clean out the large area of the hole before we put the keyhole cutter in. The keyhole cutter is just not a very strong tool, so plunging it in straight down puts a lot of undue stress on it. So this bore operation just effectively goes in and clears that hole before the keyhole cutter goes in. So nothing big there, normal settings. Then the trace operation is where we really get the keyhole made. Trace, you go to 2D and then trace. And you can kind of hack this operation to do a bunch of things. I'm gonna go through it and set it up as we would. I'll go to my setup, the keyhole setup, and then select the Bosch tool that we've already set up. That's the keyhole cutter. Again, this is all set up in the download you can get in our blog post. Select that. I ran it at 5,000 RPMs, 40 inches a minute. I say you could probably go a little bit slower. They just don't cut super well if you speed them up at all. You can see in the video in a bit here. I think it was going a little faster than it should have. So maybe slow that down a little bit. Now curve selection is effectively what we want to trace. So turn on the curve for that Boolean, which is here. You can see down there at the bottom, and that's what we're going to select, the bottom of that hole. I'm going to flip that around so it starts there. Go to heights. You can leave that as is. Under passes, we want to look at sideways compensation and leave it at center. Important here is you want to check repeat passes. So it's just going to repeat the pass and start back at the, where it entered at. We want to go both ways as well. And then nothing else there. Go to linking. Keep tool down. I don't know that this is necessary, but just seems smart. And that should be it. Oh, we don't need coolant. I don't know why that got turned on. Push OK. And it actually went backwards. So we're going to edit that operation. It was selected right. Flip this around. Push OK. Now you can see exactly what it's going to do. It goes in and out in the same hole. Let's simulate from the top. We don't need our operation since we already had this. Delete it. If I select these two with shift and then plus simulate. I'll turn off this transparent. If I click and drag here, it's gonna go slowly through the operation. So this is the bore. Just a simple 1330 down cutter. It's gonna go do the rest of these. I'll show you in a sec that pattern. Go through those quickly here. All five of them. Sometimes simulation is just way too fast. Now we're into the trace. You can tell the 
keyhole cutter is a little bit different. It's all it's going to do is go in, go to the end of its path and back, go on to the next one. So like I said, it's super simple, but doing it right makes all the difference. And these came out super clean. The only last thing here is all I did was set up one. And then, like I was saying before, you don't actually have to model the rest of these. It's just so that you can make sure your simulation looks good or that you knew what it was going to look like ahead of time. The pattern here, if I edit that, a pattern you get by going to set up, new pattern, and you drag your operations into it. So I use the sketch as the line segment. So it's patterning in a linear pattern going to the right. The spacing is eight inches, which is the same as our holes. And then I had five instances, keep the original and order by tool. So then it's just gonna repeat the same thing over and over. If you've never used a pattern, you should definitely look into those. They're super helpful. Simulate to the end. You can see we have keyholes in each one. That's pretty much it. It's a very simple operation. I'll show you what it actually looked like when we cut it here right after this. So you could do the keyholes at the beginning or the end. We opted to do them at the end after pretty much finishing the sign otherwise. We flipped it over on its face so that the sign was oriented just like our setup. That's more or less it. We're ready to run this as long as you have it oriented right. This is the 1330 and it's going to start doing those bores. Don't mind my babbling to Ricky in the background. That's all the boring. We'll go tool change and get the keyhole cutter. There's actually a weird problem with our controller WinCNC that if you set too many of the feed settings the same in Fusion, then it doesn't change for each one of these. So you can tell it's going a little too fast. It's not dropping back down to like 40 inches a minute. It's just doing the rapid speed. So we quick changed that and continued on. Watching this back, it doesn't actually seem that much better. It's moving a little too fast into that cut, but it worked all right and it actually turned out perfect. So I just recommend slowing it down. I hope you found this keyhole video helpful. Remember you can get this keyhole boolean tool fusion model to insert into your models to quickly make keyholes on our post link below. If you wanna support the channel, but don't want a Patreon-like subscription, buy me a coffee is the perfect option. The idea of buy me a coffee is to offer someone a cash equivalent of buying them a drink as a thank you. It's a one-time thing to show your support for the channel and keeps the content and coffee flowing. Look for the link below for buy me a coffee. If you want to get our cat and cam models that we show in the videos, subscribe to our Patreon at cnc.money. Thanks. If you haven't subscribed, it's imperative you do. I know if you watched this far, you obviously enjoyed it a little. 